Look at verse 25. David wanted to honor God with his life. He had a divine perspective. It says this. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. This is chapter 17. Now turn over to chapter 17. Uh, you're going, where's 25 there? Uh, and I looked in my Bible. It was missing too. Uh, let's flip over past the Goliath thing to uh, verse 25 of chapter 17. And uh, this is after 10-foot-high Goliath scares everybody. And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man who has come up? Surely he has come up to defy Israel. And it shall be that the man who kills him, the king will enrich with great riches. He'll give him his daughter. His father's house will be exempt from taxes. And David spoke to the men who stood by him, saying, What shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away, listen, this reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered and said, So it shall be done for this man who kills him. They, they kind of had a little... All they saw was, whoever takes care of Goliath won't pay taxes. They'll get to be the king's son-in-law, and they're going to get rich. And so David says, who's going to take care of Goliath? And they said, whoever does will be the king's son-in-law, and they won't have to pay taxes, and they'll get rich. And David said, but who's going to take care of this one who is defying God? You see, David was the only one that saw the real problem. And David wanted to honor God with his life. His desire was not to not pay taxes, to get rich, and to be married to the king's daughter. His goal in life was to not let Goliath reproach and, and bring despot to the name of God. Do you see the difference in the focus of his life? Have you ever noticed some people, they never get above the, I don't want to pay taxes and I want to get rich and I want to marry the right you know, person that will help me socially. And they never get the perspective of helping to magnify the name of God. That's why David was so great. David wanted to honor God with his life. He wanted to be one who had a divine perspective. He wanted to be one who stood alone for God. I don't think anybody else saw the problem. The story of David and Goliath has nothing to do with Philistine armies and giants. It has to do with the eternal, infinite God of the universe finding one person that would magnify his name when no one else would. Nobody else really had the message that day except David. David saw the need. David saw that this, this pipsqueak, ten-foot giant was making fun of God. And God says, I'm looking for one person, just one, who will stand for me alone. And God's looking for the same thing where we work, at school, in our communities. He wants us to stand for him. Look at chapter 17, verse 36. David wanted to honor God with his work. David was responsible. Nothing entrusted to him was too small to maintain. Look at this. Verse 36. He's interviewing for the job of killing Goliath. Your servant has killed both lion and bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, seeing, he repeats it again, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. Now, wait a minute. What, what, what is this lion and bear stuff? Well, David had been entrusted by his dad with the sheep. And one day a lion had come along and had taken one of the sheep. Now, David could have gone, oh, let's see, we have 260 and that's one and the lion looks pretty ferocious. He can have it. <laughs> no, not one thing entrusted to David was too small for him to to take responsibility for. And you know, our Lord Jesus Christ said, uh, he says, to whom the one who is faithful now which is least will be faithful now which is much. And, and Jesus taught the principle of, if you've been entrusted a room to take care of, a, a bicycle to take care of, a, a little job in the family to take care of, and if you can't even bother to do those things, how can he give you something bigger? If David couldn't take care of one measly sheep, how could he take care of the flock of Israel? You see, God says you've got to be faithful in that which is little. And if you're not faithful in little, you won't be faithful in big stuff. If you sweep under the rug, uh, I mean, um, the, the story of the slave girl in, in a century ago home that, that was taught not to sweep under the rug because the Lord watched her and it changed her whole life. She used to sweep the dirt under the rug. And the, the one she worked for said, you know what, I won't see that until I lift up all the rugs. But she said, God's in the room all the time. 
And that's what David lived in. He wanted to honor God with his work. He wanted to be responsible. And whatever God had entrusted him, whether it was a little sheep or, or a little job, he did it for the Lord. Now, 